Pitfilm Express for Beginners. You guys have been asking for it, so here it is. Today I'll be answering some more of your questions, so just leave them in the comments below for what you want to see me do next. Today you're going to be learning how to do a simple zoom transition, which is pretty much my zoom transition remastered. Also, a slow motion effect, kind of like what Flea does. Advanced keyframing using, using manual bezier, and also basic screen pumps. I rate the difficulty of this tutorial 2 out of 5 stars because it's super easy, but you still have to know some basic knowledge of like composite shots and keyframes. And to learn all that, you can just go to my very first hit film beginner video. I will put a link to that in the description. By the way, I forgot to mention this, but I will be doing all this editing in HitFilm Express 12, and I will leave a download link for HitFilm Express 12 in the description below. Here are some clips of what you're going to be learning to make today. All right, now that you know what we're gonna be learning today, let's get right into it. So we're gonna start off with the zoom transition. The zoom transition is probably my favorite transition because it's just so simple to do and it looks really good. All right, so to start off, we're gonna need two clips in a composite shot. If you don't know what a composite shot is or how to get one, go back to my first hit film beginner tutorial. I'll also link it in the description. If you haven't seen it, you definitely should because that's where I explain all the complete 100% basics of hit film. So, once you have your composite shot and your clips, you're going to drag both of your clips in. Alright, so once you have your clips inside of your composite shot, now you just want to decide when you want the transition to happen. So I'm just going to look through this uh, clip, and let's see, right about here. I think I want it to happen, I want it to, I want the transition to start right here. So you can just drag the clip to end right there, and then have the new clip start at around that area. So let's see what it looks like right now. All right, looks fine. So, right now it's just a, it's just a straight transition. It just goes straight to the other clip. So we're gonna make that more interesting by making it like a little zoom. Alrighty, then next up, you're gonna go into the effects tab and search for the effect spherical warp, and drag that onto both of your effects. So this is really similar to all my other transitions, like the slide ones and all that. You just gotta go into the effect, turn down the amount to zero for both of the clips or else it will look really warped and stuff. So you want to turn it to zero to make it look normal. And then right over, right where the first clip ends, see, I'm going to move this thing over right right there. I think that's where the first clip ends. And you can zoom in with this slider down here to really see where it ends. Actually, it ends right there, Never mind. So right there, um, we're going to turn the scale to 120. Now press this circle to keyframe it. And now I'm going to go back a little bit, maybe like right here, about a one, one second before that, and set the scale back over to 100. Then you want to highlight both of these, hit this circle button to make it smooth, it's called manual bezier. And then once these look like circles, next you want to go to the value graph. And this is an S-curve, but we don't want it to be an S-curve, we want it to be like an exponential growth. So you can just change, change these like thingies to kind of match what I have. So now it's like an exponential growth. Let's see what that looks like. Well, you can't really tell, to be honest, in that clip, just since like there's so much things moving at once. But you'll be able to tell once I have everything done. So now, you wanna to go to the first frame of the second clip, set the scale to 80 this time, keyframe it, do the same thing. Go ahead, like one second, set the scale back to 100, highlight everything, click the circle for manual bezier value graph and then this time we're gonna set it like this it's gonna be the opposite 
So before it curved up like that, and this time we're going to make it curve like this. So let's see what this finished transition looks like. Alright, I think that's pretty clean. And here, I'm going to render and I'll show you one more final time. Alright, I finished rendering this little segment right here, and you can render it by clicking this button right here, and it will render or preview like the final product, and it will make it laggy when you play it back. So just pretty much press that button whenever you want, you want to like preview something that you made. So let's see what this looks like. So right, you can't really tell when you look straight on, because there's no like border to show that it's like zooming in. So if you look at the like, kill feed right here, you'll kind of notice it. Like you notice how it like zooms in, and then it just it just fades back into the normal scale. It looks really clean. So next, we're gonna add a zoom blur to make it just look a little bit more, I don't know, natural. Okay, so you're gonna go to the effects tab and search up zoom blur. But first, before you do anything with this, you want to click New Layer and select a Grade. A Grade is pretty much just something you can put all your effects in without moving it into both the clips. So now we can drag the Zoom Blur into our new grade that we just made. And right in the middle, right where the two clips meet, I'm going to zoom in using this bar just to maybe be a little bit more precise. So that's where the cl two clips meet. I'm going to set the strength to, let's just do like, let's do 30. So you can see how it kind of gives it that Zoom Blur effect. like. It just looks really cool and smooth like when you actually have everything working. So we're going to press this circle to keyframe it. Now I'm going to go ahead one frame. And I'm going to set the strength to negative 30. But I'm actually going to move these back one frame. But so now we have two keyframes that are really close to each other. One is negative 30 and one is 30. So now we're going to go back like about a second. I don't know, wait, I think yeah, we're zoomed in a lot. All right, this is like a second, and I'm gonna set the strength to zero. And then we're gonna go ahead a little bit and set the strength to zero as well. I'm gonna highlight all of it and then do the manual bezier thing again just to give it that more, more of like a smooth look. And this time, the graph is gonna look something like this. It's gonna be like an exponential increase right here, and like that, and it's gonna drop straight down, and then it's gonna be like this. So let's see what this looks like. There you go, that's pretty much your final zoom transition. And if you want to do any tweaks, you could always increase the length of the transition by just dragging these out more. I go in the effects, the spherical warp, just drag these out even further. In case you think the effect is a little bit too fast, I thought it was a little bit too fast right there, so I'm just gonna drag them out and it should look a little bit better. There we go, so you can just kind of tweak it and make it your own. All right, the next topic that we're gonna get into is a slow motion effect. So this slow motion effect is really simple. So pretty much all you gotta do is find the place. This is this is like one way that I like to do it. But find find the frame where you where you're about to shoot. Um, like right, right there. So I'll just I'll do it a little bit before, and then you want to split the clip by pressing Control Shift and D. I think it's gonna be Command Shift and D if you're on Mac, and it should split your clip in half right before you take the shot. And also another way you can do this is you can right click, go to Options, and then Show Waveform, and then you can see the waveform. And if you zoom in, that's where I shoot because that's where the sound just gets really loud. So you can do that to show where you shoot. All right, and then next up, you're gonna wanna choose where you want the slow motion to start. So I'm gonna do the slow-mo right around where I see the other person. Um, I'll do it like right here. So I want the slow motion to start right here, so you're gonna wanna split the clip again by pressing Control, Shift, and D. Boom, and then the clip gets split up. So now I have this middle section, and what you're gonna wanna do with this is right click, and then go to speed and duration. You should see this box show up, and then you can change the speed to however slow you want it to be. And I'm gonna do 50% because 50% is half speed. So then I'm gonna click OK. Now it's on 50% speed, and it's gotten longer since the clip is now slowed. So now we can just drag this other clip to match where that one ends. So let's see what this looks like. So now it's like a slow mo, like little effect right when you're about to shoot. I think that looks really nice and clean. All right, next up is gonna be manual bezier. So manual bezier is just like a different type of keyframe. So to make this show better, I'm just going to be using a um, thumbnail instead of a video, just you'll be able to see it better. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be using the scale. All right, so I have two two keyframes that just zooms in slowly. Let's see what this looks like. So it's just super boring, and it's just like like if you look at the value graph, it's just a linear line of it just zooming in. So what manual bezier does pretty much is it just makes it smooth. So you can see that looks a lot more smooth, zooming in compared to default. 
Yeah, just a lot, it looks a lot more smooth and natural. So that's pretty much what Manual Bezier is, and this is pretty much just advanced keyframing, using Manual Bezier instead of the default ones. So now I'm going to show you an example with an actual effect. Alright, so here I'm using the zoom blur effect, and I just set up some random effects to make it go up and then go down and then go up again. So this is what it looks like with normal keyframes. So it's just like, it just seems really robotic, so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight everything and turn it into a manual bezier. And then go into the value graph, and now we should be able to change this. So I'm just going to change it to make it look like this, and now it should look a lot better. So pretty much manual bezier just gives you more control over what you want your keyframes to do. Alright, finally we're going to be looking at screen pumps. So screen pumps are pretty much when the screen pumps to the beat. So obviously we're going to need a song for this. And I have it muted just for copyright purposes. And yeah, let's get started. So pretty much we're going to have to find where a bass hits. So you can tell like where the bass hits by looking at the waveform and seeing kind of like where the thing spikes up. So right there, how are the bass hits. And then I'm using the zoom blur effect to kind of make it pump. So I'm going to set the strength to 12, right around where the bass hits, and then keyframe that. I'm going to go back a little bit and then set it to 0. And then I'm going to highlight everything and then do manual bezier so then it looks a lot more smooth. So pretty much what ha what's happening right now is when it hits the bass, it's going to like zoom in on the screen. It's going to like do a screen pump kind of. Now we're going to go to the next bass hit right there. Do another keyframe for 12. And then the third bass hit, which is right here, I'm going to do another keyframe for 12. Uh, manual bezier all these and then in between these sets of 12 i'm going to do a zero like this isn't really making much sense right now but you'll you'll see it once i go in the value graph so now i have every time a base hits right there it goes to 12 base hit 12 base hit 12 and in between those i have zeros so pretty much this is what the value graph should look like for you Pretty much it just spikes up every time there is a base hit. So I'm just going to do some adjusting. And I think it looks pretty good. I forgot to add one thing at the end to make it return back to zero. So it should return back to zero now. And so yeah, every time a base hits, it's going to spike up like that. Like boom, boom, boom. Let's see what this looks like. There we go. It's pretty subtle. You can't really notice it. But if you look like at the map and like the inventory area, you can really notice it. I think that looks really clean and it will look really nice if it syncs up with the beat. And there we go, that's it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to leave a like, comment down, any questions that you have that you want me to put in the next video and I'll see you guys later. Hey, that, turn this shit up.